Hey guys, it's Quinn, Elegance in 18 Wheels Magazine. Guys, we just got back to the office here today and um, we've been going over some of the footage and stuff that we experienced while we were down at the Louisville Truck Show. And boy, do we have some really cool stuff to share with you. I got some footage I'm about to show you now that uh, from a personal invite that we got to attend the um, announcement of a new series coming out from the Pickett Brothers on Outlaw TV. And it looks like it's gonna be really, really exciting. So I'm gonna get right to the chase and let you guys see what we saw and what we ex experienced last Friday night down in Louisville with this special event. Check this out. <laughs> But uh, you do whatever makes you comfortable. And I gotta tell you, man, I've been sweating. I didn't sleep a wink last night because I had that recurring nightmare that only like 12 people were gonna show up. So you guys are doing my heart good to look out here and see a full room. Uh, I know I can always count on my people here. If you spread the word, you will come out and partake. So it's great to get everybody together and uh, spend some time together on, on a really like spontaneous fun project that didn't even exist like three weeks ago. Uh, I don't do a lot of social media, but I picked up on something going on out in Phoenix at Rod Pickett's shop and talked to him. And three weeks later, here we are, we put this together. But it's great to see everybody. And uh, looking out across the room, it's really cool because we almost all know each other. Like there's a... There's a brotherhood, a camaraderie. Almost everybody here knows everybody else, and that's really special. You don't see that in a lot of environments and a lot of groups, and it's pretty cool that our little segment, segment of trucking has all that. So uh, you guys should be commended the way you handle yourself at the show every day on the lot and then coming out here to support something you're really kind of in the dark about. So it's great to see y'all. I used to get nervous when I got up here and spoke in front of y'all, but I don't do that anymore because I think we're all kind of family in that uh, regards. But uh, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, I really got to hand it to our friends at Iowa Customs, Hope Bill Fenders, 12 Gauge Customs, and of course our crew at Four State. Uh, we did put this together last minute, and uh, everybody was like rallied behind it and uh, signed up real quick to help be part of it. So appreciate all them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and there was somebody else I'm forgetting. <laughs> Actually, there was a whole lot of somebody else I'm forgetting, but definitely my beautiful wife. this two or three weeks ago, threw everything together. Todd Lewis, the Pickett Brothers, all the sponsors. Uh, it's really cool to be able to do this with that short notice and have this kind of turnout. But to tell you how this all started is, like I said, I don't have the social media stuff, like all this Instagrams and Facebook, I don't have that, but my beautiful wife keeps me updated from time to time. And so she showed me a picture, like, man, there's something going on at a garage shop. Like, look, there's like big cameras. There's big cameras out there. So we checked it out, and uh, I called Rod a couple, three days later, and I said, man, it looks like you guys are 
you're onto something good out there. What's going on? And uh, he told me, he said, yeah, man, people have been hitting us up. So we finally did. We did a little pilot. And uh, it looks like, looks like it's going to go. So at that point, I said, well, man, if you're feeling good about it, it's going to go. Let's have a party. <laughs> and uh, Louisville coming up, it's the perfect time for all of us to get together and kind of learn more about it, get excited together, and spread the word. Uh, you know, anytime we can see trucks of almost any kind, but especially super cool trucks like they're going to build, it's good for the industry. It's good for every truck on that lot. It's good for all our families. It's good for our businesses as we spread the positive word of trucking and what a cool segment of the uh, industry it is. So that's what got us here uh, today. And I want to bring up, first of all, the, uh, the new project, which is going on at the Pickett Shop with Rod and Kevin. I want to bring up the executive producer, Todd Lewis. Come on up, Todd. You just sit wherever you like, bud. You are the executive. You sit wherever you like. Thank you. Check, check. Okay, we're back. So, Todd, Rod, Kevin. CB, Rhino, Scrapyard, and Rob all work together. Some, uh, we may have to get like three more turn off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some many, many years ago, which seems impossible on the, the, the scene of Trick My Truck when we filmed that in Joplin. So when I told Rod, hey, let's throw a party, Todd reached out to me and said, man, let's really pump this thing up. But it's great to have Todd here, and uh, we worked together as you were the director uh, back to Trick My Truck. Uh, kind of what was that like some 15 plus years ago, working with a bunch of clowns like us, a bunch of kids like us back then? We were all kids. I had a lot less gray hair than I do now. Um, I'll tell you, that experience was, was pretty incredible. I, I had to get a quick education. I used to think that every truck on the road was a Mac. Now I can tell you it's a 359P with a stretch frame rail, 8 inch turnout, you know, stacks. I can tell you everything about it. But getting into that, we didn't really have an idea of what we had until we, frankly, met you and Rod and Kevin at the, uh, the Reno Truck Show, where we actually found guys that were not only interesting, but built trucks. Um, did the pilot, as you know, and we shot it there at Four State, um, and really just had lightning in a bottle. And then from there, CMT ordered eight, and in the middle of eight, they ordered 24 more. Uh, and so I found myself living in Joplin, Missouri, eating uh, Waffle House and Cracker Barrel every day. Uh, yeah, I love myself a Cracker Barrel, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, after 56 episodes, uh, you know, we all made our exits, and I, I think it's time for, for trucking to, to, to be profiled on television again. Oh, 100%, couldn't agree more. Uh, Trick my truck real quick. Hands down, who was the most popular cast member? Who was most loved by all? The Scrapyard Dog. Let's turn. Let's turn. Oh, good old Rick. When, when I first came to, to Forest Day, we met Rick, and I was like, we got to find a role for this guy. He's just the most energetic, fun guy, and I think he had one line every show, which was, let's tear down, and he was in maybe a handful of scenes, but every time Rick was on set, you never knew what you were gonna get, and it's just just a blast, so many good memories. Most of you know Rick, and he is genuine. What you see is what you get. Fun 100%. fact that not many people know, CMT almost offered him his own series, like just a day in the life of Scrapyard. I didn't actually wasn't even aware of that. No, you were. Was I? I, I, I? By the way, this was 15 years ago, as you yeah. get older, you start to forget stuff, so. Rick, I we shot it down. Oh, so she was again. That's right. She was now again. I remember. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, Rick was for it. Ruby was again. Oh. Yeah, but those were the good old days. But yeah. you were just the corral master. You were the director back then. But now you're the executive producer at your own company, Watch Your 20 Productions. You're living in California? California still, yeah. Yep. So you must have, what caused you to reach out to Rod and Kevin and say, guys, it's time. Like, we, we need to get on this. The timing is right. Let's film something and get it out there. You know, I've always, i never lost my love for trucking, and, uh, and, and it's always something that stuck with me, and I was approached as an, a potential uh, person that could bring the advertisers to Jesse James's new web network, uh, Outlaw TV. Jesse James has a new network, he's kind of just launching with uh, Paul Tuttle and, and Billy Lane, 
and I watched their promo and I was like, they're missing trucking. Like it, it absolutely fits in. And I randomly sent an email to one of Jesse's sites and he emailed me back in like five minutes. And I kind of told him about my idea. He called me within five minutes and was just all about it. Um, knew exactly that the demo fit in. It, it really worked with Outlaw TV. Um, and so I went out and I, I contacted the pickets. I went out and uh, you know, a couple of things. Why do you think that is? Like from a, from a guy that's outside our industry, that's into other things, like why, what do you think would get him so fired up? Well, first of all, I think just every kid loves trucks. Every kid loves big trucks, and there's probably a lot of people in this room that watch Trick My Truck, and now we're driving your own trucks, and you saw that maybe got you inspired and encouraged to do so, but I think there's just a natural sort of interest from guys and gals and drivers across the country that just love the intrigue of like what's inside there, what makes that. For me, I want to provide programming that shows uh, Beyond like what we did before, I you know as much as I want to do a deserving truck for deserving truck drivers, I'm more so interested in why are trucks designed specifically for a different industry? What makes that truck different? That's pulling a tanker, that's pulling a flatbed, that's pulling a reefer. Like it, educate the general public and get them back interesting. Back like it was in the '70s when when trucking really hit the forefront in in Hollywood. I want I want to go back to that and make it interesting and fun to watch. But I think he saw that, and I think he saw an opportunity of going, okay, there's plenty of car shows out there, but how many big truck shows are there? Right. And there's none. Yeah. I mean, other than that Canadian show that does like wreckers, and they're pulling wrecks off the road, which is, okay, that's interesting, but it's not what the pickets do. It's not what you do. It's not what a lot of these guys in the room do. So that's what I want to profile. Yeah. It is kind of fun to think of it being back on a primetime available uh, network because you look back at Trick My Truck as cheesy as it was, which we're going to see it in a little bit. But, uh, you know, there's been uh, American Trucker was there for a while and it quickly disappeared. Ice Road, the uh, Highway to Hell, the towing thing. But there hadn't been anything for like just bad in the bone trucks. So, man, it's, it's thrilling to think that we're on the cusp of, of this being available again. And you've got, like you said, multiple networks with their hand in the air. It's been crazy, the interest, and, and again, I, I can't give Yellowstone enough credit, but I've had multiple networks that said, it, it, we'll air it, tell us, tell us when, we'll do it. Um, it it's, it's intriguing, everyone likes big trucks, and everyone likes a payoff at the end. So, while it's not gonna be trick by truck where it's standalone, which means one episode doesn't connect with the other, you'll always get a payoff every episode. So if we introduce a truck on episode one, you're gonna see that truck finished on episode three. So I think all the stories kind of intertwine with one another. Yeah, for sure. And looking at the trailer, which obviously I've seen, it's really kind of targeted to anybody that's a mechanical gearhead. Like, it's, it's got a lot of unique characters that are like total opposite end of the spectrum of Trick My Truck, which, which I like as well. Yep. Yep. Okay, it's awkward because they're standing right over there. With the guys in the back? Yeah, not like you literally corralled us for two and a half years back in the olden days. Like sum up Rod and Kevin in a paragraph each. Rod's really easy. Rod, Rod, Rod's the easy one. It's his brother that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, it was so much fun. We have so many memories. We spent, what, three years together, 12 to 16 hours a day. I, I really wanted an opportunity to reconnect with the guys, so we went out to Phoenix or Buckeye and we shot. Kevin and I and Rod, we didn't skip a beat. It was like we were with each other the day before, just completely on each other's cases, ripping a new one to each one. That's just kind of the, 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 the dynamic that we have, of just making fun of each other and just making it a great time. So, I mean, you were on set, you knew. You guys were relentless on me. <laughs> and I always had to fight back, but it was great. You know, the, the, the Pickett brothers are, are really icons in this industry like yourself. Um, I'm excited to show the talent that they have and the trucks that they build and also the personalities that they have. But as much as I say I don't like working with them, it, it, I, I love working with them. <laughs> when I called Rod and uh, told him, I said, man, this is pretty exciting. Like, we want to promote it. We want to cheerlead. We want to get the word out there. Uh, and then we met Wednesday night, like two days ago, for the first time in seven years, 
and we sat over there in the hotel lobby. We could have talked through the night telling, oh, telling old stories. It was so much fun to get back together and just BS. You know, it was it was such a, a, a fun time in all of our lives. It didn't seem that fun back then. It didn't, but now we look at it and it's like, wow, that was so much fun. There were so many big inside jokes. Like, if we put all this in the room and a bunch of strangers, they have no idea what we're talking about. But that's what guys do. We like, you know, hold on to stuff from 15 years ago that we still laugh about once a week. Yep. So a little bit back to trick my truck, and we'll call it its unfortunate demise. I mean, it might have went 10 more years with the original crew, but when we lost, when the cast lost creative ability to build cool trucks and were mandated by the network, like you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and they started getting like really hokey, so hokey that I can remember the conversation with Rod, like. Dude, this is embarrassing. I'm ready to quit. Are you? He said, I'm out. It was <laughs> doggy wash stations, snow cone machines, foot massagers, toy train tracks. But you look back at season one, those eight trucks, the first eight trucks, super cool. And a good bit of season two, but then it went downhill quick. But I asked Rod, I said, tell me you got creative authority to design and build these trucks. And he said he does. And surely you're going to keep them cool as it goes into season or episode after episode. 100%. There's a term in Hollywood called jumping the sharks. Uh -huh. And that's it's a, a, a throwback to when in Happy Days, when Fonzie jumped the sharks. That's when the show goes downhill. We jumped the sharks pretty early. Um, and I was having Rod and Kevin build, it wasn't me, but I was directing them to build birdhouses and all sorts of crazy stuff. I don't want to do that, guys. Like, let's keep trucking. These are these are running trucks. They're not show trucks. I, I want to profile the drivers. I want to profile the industries um, and, and really show what trucking is all about. Trucking's been so good to me. I want to pay that back uh, tenfold. And um, I think now's the time to do it and do it the right way to where we don't have to rely on stupid little novelty things to, to keep the show going. But Rod and Kevin, for the most part, have creative control, within reason. Uh, but and that's the way we want to keep it. Let's just show some cool-ass trucks like we're seeing them a lot next door. Amen. Yeah, and that we're seeing next door. Uh, and, and, and let's make a show for all of you, you know, and all the people. And let's educate the general public. Look, don't cut trucks off on the road. You know, have a lot more respect for those people that are delivering everything that we're sitting on, touching the evening that's been delivered by a truck. Let's pay those, that respect back. I'm pretty excited to see see it come to pass. So, you've got a flick we can watch, right? I brought a little something with me, yes. Okay. Well, give it up for Todd Lewis, everybody. Thank you, guys. That's your introduction. You do your thing, Brian. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go ahead and watch what we got here. You all enjoy. We're going to dim the lights, and then we'll uh, move on to the next phase. I'm just 
just the dancing monkey was welding shit together so they could look at it. Thank you. 
last piece of airline, stick this on and we'll see how it works. So this is what it looked like at stock height, but this is what it's going to look like with our air dumped out of it. That's how you make a stock truck look a shit ton cooler. Right. Kind of how that deal went. 
it was my parents' house, this old dairy farm in the barns when we started, and I was in there for until I came to Phoenix. So it was, it was a one day shop. We both worked out of it. And so they were outside in the morning, inside, but hey, that's, that's how it worked. So moved to Phoenix just because of the weather. I just got tired of the weather. So went down there. I've been down there for going on 11 years already now, so it's crazy. A lot more truck traffic in Phoenix than Marysville. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're pretty, we're supposed to a small shop anyway, so we stay busy up yep. there, but down here, yeah, it's definitely yep. way, way more. When I called you about this thing, you said you were moving from one shop to another or adding a second building or something. Yep, we just built a brand new shop from where we cool. were, so we got the bigger, bigger facility now, yep. so we'll be able to do a little more right set up. Cool. Obviously, Kevin, you came down to film in Phoenix, but what's going on back in Washington? Still kind of doing the same thing Rod does. I do a few repairs and whatnot, but I'd only have a couple guys that work for me and a lot of new, a lot of new cameras just because, you know, they're based right near us and a lot of, a lot of dump trucks. We do a ton of, ton of dirt trucks set up by us, so it keeps me busy. We got a couple of big builds going that is good for filling and so basically kind of doing the same thing. And we work together on a lot of stuff. Sure. Parts back and forth and all that stuff. But, yep. It seems like back pre-trick my truck, I remember you doing like road service. Like you had a call out truck that was wicked yep. sweet and you would go out roadside. Yup, I did. I still have both my service trucks, but I, I got a 06 Duramax with a box on the back and it's got 30,000 miles on it. So I'll tell you about how many service calls I do. <laughs> but no, it's, I'm just so busy in the shop. I can't ever get away. And you know, I just, I, I still get calls probably once a week, but I mean, if it's a good customer that I do stuff for now, I will go out, but I just pretty much stay in the shop and sleep away. If you're like us and everybody in this room, there's no shortage of work that needs doing. No, there's no, definitely, yeah, I mean, for everybody, you know, I mean, there's so many, there's so many good shops out there, and trucks, and people wanting to, you know, spend more money on that stuff, it's just, it's, the, it's really cool to see that, for sure. how far it's gone. Yep. So, Rod, and I can both answer this, but uh, in the flick, I think you said, you know, you had countless people say, man, you should do another series, You're like, you guys, you should be doing this. What made you say, tell everybody no, but when Todd reached out, you considered it and moved forward. Yeah, but probably since we did show, probably four times I've been approached, but it's the Hollywood typical, you know, wanting to do their deal, and I was, I was not interested at all. I was like, not even into it. And when Todd called, and we talked for a minute, and I'm like, if we can do just a standard, no drama, boring show, I would say, but people, I'm like, that's, that's what I like to watch anyway. I don't need the drama, and he's like, yeah, but you, the, well, we're totally in for that. I'm like, I'm down for that, because I think it will boost the, the trucking industry, it's a little boost, and I think it'll, just, I think it'll help, and, no drama, they don't need all the drama stuff, and I, I, think it'll, I think it'll turn out good, so I'm always down for that, because I'm not I'm in a TV thing anyway, I'm not even up here, I'm not, even, I'm not even this guy up here, so that's the last thing I need, so I'll just do my normal deal, and I'm, I'm down with that. I'm pumped for it. Anything to add? No, it's, be, I, it's, I think we'll be able to showcase other builders and manufacturing stuff, you know what I mean, that side of it, and be able to go around and show more of what everything's all about, Really, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people don't know how half that stuff's done out there, and we'd like to show them how it's done, and you know, I mean, what's behind it. Yeah, it's cool that it's on a likely going to be on Outlaw because I would assume from what I've read and seen, it's going to be a, a, a channel for gearheads, whether they're building motorcycles or guns or four wheel drives or semis. I mean, it's like R9 to TV, so. Exactly, and we're not pinched on just doing whatever yeah. we're doing. If we, you know, if we feel like the audience isn't like yeah. what we're doing, we can, we can change it up. Or if we don't like what we're doing, we'll change it up. So it's like we're not locked into something. So I think it'll, I think it'll be fun, and it's usually it turns out good. Yeah, and 100% with Todd, executive producer, he's seen the demise of what we did 15, 18 years ago. So you know, I'm totally stoked about how this is going to work. So I'm assuming you've got kind of like a storyline or an idea or a project for like episode one. Uh, any deets you can leak on that, or is that still kind of like up in the air? Uh, it was still kind of up in the air, but we got we got a few different directions we can we can go there. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we got nothing. The suspense will build. <laughs> Thanks for talking all around that, Kevin. Outlaw TV, Jesse James, I mean, all of us watched him, like, probably fairly religiously with the West Coast Choppers and other stuff. 
Like, have you guys met him? Has he, has it been on the phone, to the site, on the, you know, to the team, Zoom? Like, is he like an approachable type guy or? Oh yeah, 100%. He's, he's just like us, just doesn't, you know what I mean, just wants to work and showcase what everybody can do. And he's really back, we've got a, quite a few Zoom meetings with him. And yeah, he's, it's, uh, it'll be a cool deal for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, even what he said in his flag, like, He's doing this because the network restricted him on what he really wanted to do, so he should be super supportive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like win win. He's been doing it for so long, he knows he did twice as long as for whatever. Yeah. Much less, so he knows all the little tweaks and stuff that needs yeah. to be done rather than being boxed into a corner. We did what, four seasons, 41 episodes. That dude's probably done 10 seasons and hundreds of episodes. So, yeah, a lot of experience there. Okay, this is a tricky one, so think, think it through. Uh, on a personal level, what are you guys most excited about for this project? Let's say you're four seasons into an eight season recording, and you're feeling good about the trucks, you like the way it's coming together, you're feeling good about people are really going to dig this. Like at that point, what, what's, what's the biggest driver? What's success in, this, in doing this whole project for you at that point? I don't know, like Kevin said, you know, going around into other shops and other people in the industry, and it's just, I, I mean, I've been so blessed on, you know, customers and suppliers and everything. I just want, you know, I want to give back to that, and I, I think it's time for that. And that's that's the part that I like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, pretty much what he said. It's just um, just to be able to film and build what we want. That nobody telling us what we have to say, what we have to build, what it's going to look like. It's basically whatever or the customer wants, you know what I mean? So it's gonna be just, you know what I mean, our, our deal. Cool. And like you said, when it comes to suppliers, even other shops that in some way could be competitors, uh, and all these customers and tens of thousands more, we're all kind of like a family. There's like a mutual respect and brotherhood and sharing of, if, if this guy's broke down and this guy's neck of the woods, we go out and help him, we know he'll go out and help us. So promoting the whole thing, that's a cool concept that I hadn't really pondered much before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, trucking industry is huge, but it's really not. It's, it's not. way smaller than you think it would be. Yeah, yeah. I get people all the time call me like, hey man, who do you know in Nevada? I got a truck to run a fan through the radiator. And probably seven out of 10 times, you guys all get these calls. You have somebody's number that can help them get rolling. Exactly. It's pretty cool, I love that. Uh, so it's been how many years since you were at Matt's? You told me, I don't remember. 17. 17. After missing, missing, after not attending so many, what was your biggest takeaway from the, what, one or two days you've been at Matt's? What's uh, like, wow, I didn't expect that, or I didn't see that one coming? Yeah, I mean, the, the quality of trucks nowadays is just, it's insane. I mean, every, the, it's cool to see young guys coming into it, and stoked about it, and the old guys still into it, stoked about it, and just, just the trucks are crazy. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm still blown away. It's just, it's just cool. Same, yeah, it's just the level of trucks now where they've come from back when we first started showing trucks in the early to mid 90s is insane. It's just, it's it's definitely taken a turn for the better by far. I told somebody today in the booth, you know, the stuff we did on Trick My Truck, that was as hokey as it was to watch that stuff right now. It was cool back then. Hey, a 32 inch TV that's lifted out of the cabinet, you know, and like four subs. That was cool stuff, but you could take 90% of the trucks on that lot today at the PKY would smoke any exactly. truck project. The bar is just incredibly high. You wonder when it tops out. Like when, when has every perfect country and Western song been written? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's cool to see. There's a lot of uh, attention to detail, creativity, and vision amongst all those trucks. It's just super cool. Half the trucks in the parking lot would do that. Yes, yeah, yeah. on the outskirts, around the loop. Exactly, yes, 100%. Yeah, there's a whole other truck show out there. Yeah, go check yeah. it out. Uh, on a little bit of a different topic, we did get to spend a lot of time together doing Trick My Truck. It's hard to believe it was two and a half years of our lives. At least I was in my hometown. But you guys would come for like three and four weeks at a time, go home for a week and come back. Uh, but we literally haven't, other than a wedding for a mutual friend, we really haven't been together in 15 years. 
Uh, and thinking of the old days and the trick my truck era, I'll, I'll go first. But is there any unique stories, <coughs> memories, funny times <laughs> of uh, of our time together? They're either on the set or outside of work or or hanging out here, there, and yonder. Um, be thinking about that. And I've got one, and I know I'm going to steal yours. I know I'm going to steal yours. So I can't remember. I, I don't think it was the year of this build-off, because I don't know why we would, one of us wouldn't have been pulling the mob sled. So it had to be the following year. But uh, we were all meeting down here, and somehow these guys were flying to St. Louis. And me and CB, CB Grimes, we're going to pick them up at the airport in St. Louis and carry them over to Louisville. And then I think we might have carried you back after the show and dropped you off in St. Louis. Why the hell we picked St. Louis? I don't know. But anyway, we were young, not real sharp. But uh, I had bought from a customer of mine a 1976 mustard yellow Ford Ford or LTD for $800. I mean, this thing run perfect. And pul upholstery was good. It was also mustard yellow. Uh, had all four hubcaps on it in the factory. I mean, it was just a grandma car. And I was so excited to get that car, mainly for this stunt. So I hooked a trailer behind it, put a trailer hitch, and it still had the gas, the license plate where you fold it down and put the gas in. Put a trailer hitch on that. Now, that's not easy to find, a trailer hitch for an LTD. Hooked onto like a 14-foot enclosed trailer, put a ladder on the roof of the car with a spare tire and wheel on top of the ladder, ran a one-inch ratchet strap through the back windows and pulled up there just as proud as I could be. They were on the curb. And I was like, Rod, Kevin, over here. And I just started wandering out wide, like, oh my gosh, I hope nobody. There's no way this is Brian. Who's this homeless guy? He's going to pick us up. You were hoping nobody knew you. Yeah, and it was perfect too, because the whole sidewalk was full of people waiting on taxis and everything. But we had, we had a good time. We ran across there, and we were kind of a day early, and we stopped at somewhere, Mount Vernon or something, and spent the night. Like, boy, we were hard chargers. I mean, we must have made it 100 miles before we shut down. <laughs> and we stayed at the Ramada Inn or something, and somebody stole our gas in the middle of the night. Gas kept on on the ground. Gas gauge empty. We had to fill up. But we got all that patched together and pulled up right in the middle of PKY. Like, they already had a few trucks parked. We pulled right up in the middle and got out and started greeting everybody. But I had so much fun putting that stunt together, and it went it went so good. We drove that thing all over town the whole week. It was your only set of wheels. Yeah. So that's got to be one of my top 25 of all time. But definitely a, a picket trick my truck story. That definitely, that was good. That was a good time. Was okay. Like one, of the, one of the cool, another little thing we had, which is, I don't know, probably cheesy, but we uh, we got invited to the CMT Awards one year. Yeah. So we uh, we got we got the paddy wagon. We, we conned in him and let us use it. So we rode up to the red carpet. All of us got out of the paddy wagon and went in the red car. It was kind of cool. Man. It kind of felt like I was somebody for a minute. <laughs> that was a good time. That was intimidating. That was intimidating. Yeah, that yeah, was, was pretty wild. You're bringing back old memories. This is another fun fact. Remember who they? We were like nobodies, and we looked like golf, uh, a bowling team. You said we look like bowling team in these stupid green shirts. <laughs> then we did. But uh, they had it like the nobodies were in a holding pen, like a room, you know, a little tiny room. You know who we were in there with? Uh, who sings motorboat? Little Big Town was in there, and they were also nobodies. That's right, they were. Now they're worth millions, and we're sitting here. <laughs> but hey, they were as scared as we were. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen me exchange phone numbers with them. He stayed in touch with them forever, but yeah, they hit the big time. That's right. That's, That's what's right. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After party click, uh, Trey Zackens, he's like a foot taller than Kevin. We, we all felt small, that dude. Yeah, yeah, and he's dipping and smoking and got a beer in his hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was intimidating. <laughs> He was somewhat legendary, yeah. And then the red carpet, you'd walk down it and there'd be like reporters from various magazines or whatever, I don't know, want to be here and in 10 foot there'd be another one and 15 foot there'd be another one. Nobody wanted to talk to us. <laughs> and a few felt sorry for us. And we were so young and stupid. We'd pull over there like to talk to them, like didn't know what to say, waiting for them to pitch a question. 
They'd put your question, nobody would answer. I'd look to my left, I'd look to my right. Anybody want to take this? <laughs> and old Brian yeah, exactly. did some interviews. I don't, I don't even remember what we did or what it was about. We offered the red carpet was super cool, and the paddy wagon was a nice touch. Um, I don't know if I have to ever, the, the, they're all stories. Most of them I probably can't even tell, so. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell one, I'm taking one for you. It's about you. Fire away. <laughs> so, and you were home or something, and Kevin had, was staying at our house for a period of time, and it was a night, just any other night of the week, and we'd done ate supper, and we were sitting in there in the living room, and it was me and one of my girls and my wife, and Napoleon Dynamite was on. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite was on. And it was not new. This was like reruns of it. It was not like the first time Kev saw it. Watching him laugh so hard that he lost his breath and was doubled over it. Napoleon Dynamite. Me and the wife and kid, we laughed at you watching that laughing. I'll never forget that. And the wheeze. <laughs> you were wheezing and out of breath. That was, that was so fun. Like, I'll never recreate that. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's see here. Let me look at my q and I think we've been through them all. We told stories. Um, we talked about, you know, creative uh, control from you guys is a big thing to keep in the trucks cool. I mean, we've been through all that. That's on track, looking good, feeling good. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Executive Producer. <laughs> He's already telling us what to do. A, he did that for two and a half years. Yeah. But without him, that would have been a failed project much earlier than that. So, anyway, once again, like I said, we're your biggest cheerleaders. Uh, you guys, if you want to tell two of your friends, you videoed something tonight, you took a picture of something tonight, you can certainly share it. There's no restrictions. Uh, we wanted you to know first. Like I said, this was not even a conversation three weeks ago. So I hope you're as excited as I am, and uh, we're pumped to kind of get it out there and see something. And I'm talking this kind of ball parking. We might see something certainly first of next year, which seems forever away. But you know how time goes. That's only only nine months away, uh, and maybe even maybe even sooner, maybe the fourth quarter. So um, anything to add, Bob? No, that's pretty much it. I appreciate all the support. It's been great. Everybody's always awesome, and appreciate it. Yep. I want to uh, thank especially again uh, 12 Gauge Customs, Hope Built, Iowa Customs, all your friends at Four State. You, uh, you folks mean a lot to us. Uh, you are our extended family. It means a lot on a Friday night at Matt's. You chose to come here instead of going out on Four Street. Although we're going to get you out of here in time uh, to head down there. So uh, they're going to be over here uh, chatting with you, taking pictures, BS and shooting the breeze. Once we're done, so hang out as long as you like. We got the room till uh, eight o'clock, but if you got to scuttle out of here, we certainly get it. So thanks to all of you. Thanks to our sponsors. Give it up for Rod and Kevin. Thank you. So what'd you think? Told you. It's gonna be a, a really cool series. We're wishing the Pickett Brothers the very best in everything that they do because it looks like they're gonna be stepping up and, and giving us something that we've been missing for a while now on 
TV and the series look like it's gonna be exciting, especially for me. So guys, this is Quinn, Elegance 19 Wheels Magazine. Special shout out to Brian Martin and Four States uh, Trucks for giving us the opportunity to take part in that event. Um, everyone, all the sponsors and everyone that was there and especially Kevin and Rod Pickett. Guys, we wish you the best. We'll see you later. It's Quinn, Elegance 19 Wheels Magazine. Stick, keep it posted right here, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.